Last time we have seen uh, how to model a mono shot vib uh, multi vibrator and uh, uh, this time we will uh, start with uh, right shift register which we have seen earlier in the combinational circuits and uh, uh, here we have um, a 16 bit register and um, this 15 is the weight of the bit and that is uh, MSB and so on it, uh, LSB is 0. And uh, if you wish to have um, this, I mean, uh, register contents, you can get, uh, get it out here uh, as uh, data out 1 and naturally 15 through 0 uh, indicates the uh, width of the uh, register as such. It has a clock input and once again we will um, take only positive edge of the clock and uh, uh, this being a right shift register, uh, shift uh, automatically implies that uh, it is going to be right shift. And when shift is um, uh, asserted, only then the um, uh, uh, shifting will take place at every positive edge of the clock. And uh, 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 this, uh, when you um, uh, right shift, this uh, fifteenth bit is vacated. So this will be filled with a zero. Uh, this is the case with uh, uh, Verilog uh, um, instruction as such. And uh, you can uh, reset the whole register once again by a uh, system reset. Uh, let us see uh, what the contents before uh, shift is. Let us say uh, 1010 uh, and uh, after the shift by 1 bit uh, naturally uh, uh, 0 will be occupied here and uh, all the thing, uh, contents will be shifted by 1 bit and zero will, uh, the last 0 will get uh, lost in the process and uh, uh, we will see how to implement this. We uh, use once again an always block as such and uh, 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 as usual we will use assign so that we do the pre-computation uh, say in this case the uh, uh, right shift. This, uh, this you are already familiar from our combination circuit. We are going to precisely use the very same thing. The shifting is actually done in the combinational but we also combine a sequential here so that uh, the um, uh, real system picture will be uh, this combination. And uh, here uh, data out 1 is shifted by 1, this is the symbol for uh, uh, shift, right shift as such uh, as you had seen earlier and if you want left shift you have the arrows the other way. And uh, we assign this to uh, what is called next, we have the same name and this implies next value is going to be this and uh, that uh, this value will be used within the obelisk block. Uh, when the clock really uh, um, uh, makes its appearance, that is at the positive edge of the clock. Once again we have an always block, 
at a positive edge of clock we take the action uh, or at a negative edge of reset and uh, once again we check the reset condition here if it is 0 then only we will uh, what we will do is we will preset rather it is not resetting we will preset with the decide uh, um, value that you want and uh, notice that 16 is once again it uh, tells what is the total uh, width of the, uh, this uh, data and uh, this is 16 bits as we have said so uh, 16 is there and uh, you also need this uh, quote here and uh, uh, B stands for the binary and uh, uh, what follows is uh, the binary pa pattern as such bit pattern and uh, you notice that one underscore is being used this has no real meaning as such as far as the uh, system tool is concerned uh, it simply ignores this underscore uh, it is only to facilitate uh, uh, ease of reading uh, at the user level so, uh, otherwise it has no meaning uh, uh, suppose had i put uh, all uh, and continuously without this underscore even then it is valid but readability will be poor when you are uh, dealing with zeros and ones 16 bit uh, reading will always be a difficult thing it is only to facilitate reading at your end and uh, this is the uh, uh, comment for this which says preset when the system is uh, reset we want to shift if that condition is not met so we would like to shift the contents so what we do is we check whether the shift is uh, asserted or not if it is asserted then what we do is um, we uh, just assign that uh, data out one next this is uh, containing not, uh, nothing other than the shifted value here which was pre-shifted here so notice that that is a combination circuit so that will keep on churning and uh, be ready at all the time so when the clock strikes it is always the correct data that you have here and uh, that is how uh, that is the reason why we just assign this will speed up uh, um, uh, frequency of operation that is why uh, always um, all uh, time consuming computation are always done outside using assigned uh, statements and uh, we just uh, transfer the contents when the clock strikes and the comment is uh, clear from this and uh, if uh, shift is um, not to be done for example if shift is 0 this um, block uh, uh, will not be uh, processed so, uh, so what we do is uh, we go to the next and uh, here there is no if statement here uh, because this is the uh, this happens to be the very last of the uh, series and uh, we just wind up with uh, else here and uh, here it only preserves the previous contents and uh, so, uh, suppose uh, sub, uh, we do not want uh, to put this uh, we, uh, we are free to do just give a semicolon there uh, we can have an alternate way of uh, implementing same shift register uh, what we have used is that uh, less than symbol twice and uh, you can also um, as I use um, concatenation as such for example uh, let us say very uh, very same example we are uh, just uh, nomenclaturing it as 2 here instead of 1 uh, because we are going to simulate later on and uh, we should not have the same name for different uh, outputs as such although uh, they are basically one concatenate here uh, 0 because after right shift what uh, happens to the uh, MSB is we fill 0 there so we put a 0 here and then we separate by a comma here it means the, uh, this whole thing you should regard it as a single 16 bit as such and the first bit we are forcing it to 0 by putting like this and uh, then follow it by the actual uh, um, 15 to 1 because after right shift this 15 to 1 will um, go to the um, uh, uh, rightmost end as such so in which case uh, one bit will be the last I mean LSB here and, uh, and 0 is not accounted because we do not know we do not really care whether 0 is there or not if you want to preserve it you will have to preserve it by another statement as such which we will be seeing in one of the uh, future uh, applications as such and uh, pre shift write the contents of data out to register by one bit so you give a meaningful comment as we have seen earlier and once again there is a um, always block here and we take action only on positive edge of clock or uh, negative edge of reset so once again there is a begin and finally there will be an end wherever there is an always block is there 
Now we uh, again uh, inspect uh, for uh, reset being uh, active. If it is so, what we do is just preset as we had done earlier. And uh, if shift is uh, asserted, then uh, assign the shifted data here. This is precisely the same thing as uh, you have already considered. And uh, uh, do not shift here, just preserve the contents. So, next example we will be considering is, um, suppose we have a parallel uh, data as such, we want to serialize this data. So, what we do is, um, uh, we can use a combination of uh, shift register and uh, counter. So, this can be very easily implemented, uh, I mean uh, coded in Verilog as such. And uh, let us consider this block diagram and uh, we are not explicitly showing a shift register or counter here, but we can readily incorporate it in the uh, coding as such. So, let us say we want to once again uh, reset the system with a power on reset or system reset and uh, you want to load a particular value at any point of time you can assert this load and, and prior to that uh, you can um, uh, set the data using this bus say 15 through 0 that is a 16 bits that is what we uh, stated earlier uh, as far as the width is concerned. And uh, so, uh, the output will manifest here this will be a uh, serialized output it is a single bit and uh, when this is valid that also will be indicated by another signal which is uh, data valid. If required we can use this if it is merely asynchronous, you are not really bothered about these two signals. And uh, when the shift, I mean uh, conversion is over, you have to have an end of conversion sort of thing. So, we uh, give one more signal here as uh, end of conversion. And uh, so, coming to this, uh, if uh, we have seen, I mean uh, load, uh, it loads the uh, set data as such uh, into the shift register which is 16 bit in width. And uh, when uh, shift is asserted, and we, um, only then the shift will take place. The shift can be either right or left and uh, for that also you need one more inf uh, uh, bit of information and that is this signal. So, R stands for the ac high actually uh, as indicated here and um, um, this is left, L stands for left. Left I have uh, put underscore N as usual the same notation we have followed earlier. So, we can uh, if it is slow it will be left shift. So, depending upon that and uh, shift will take action accordingly. And uh, postage of the clock is uh, reckoned here once again and we will see how to implement uh, code it. Once again we use an always statement because uh, all sequential circuits are represented by always uh, with a positive edge of clock and so on. So, once again if a reset is asserted we uh, initialize all the uh, outputs as such. We have a data out and um, data valid signal and uh, end of conversion all of them must be uh, deasserted and uh, that uh, needs no explanation as such. And uh, if load is asserted then what we have to do is uh, we have a shift register inside which is uh, 16 bit in uh, width as such. We do not have to put the uh, bit here uh, although it is a good practice to put here. And uh, what we need to do is we need to uh, take the set input, um, uh, set data input uh, what we have seen earlier here. Uh, this will have to be uh, read and put into the uh, shift register as such. That is what this statement is doing. And uh, mind you, uh, one statement is complete uh, only with a semicolon. And uh, you can put any number of statements here in the same line or you can fold it just to save space to show in a single slide and then put it in, in this fashion. And once again data out we do not have to assert right now because data is not going to be out right at this stage. What we are uh, doing at this stage is merely loading the preset value that is the uh, dat, I mean, uh, set data as such. And uh, we have a counter to keep track of how many bits we have sent. And uh, since we want 16 bits to be sent in total, uh, we will just initiate uh, this one counter. Uh, this is uh, 5 bits as such. Uh, so, uh, 16 is loaded onto that here, it is a preset value and uh, once again you um, um, deasset all the outputs here. Next up is if uh, shift is asserted and also the counter is not 0 which implies 
that it has been processing uh, sending the information. And uh, so, if it is not asserted uh, this is uh, once again an AND symbol and this is a total logic expression and therefore, you see 2 equal to if you put 1 equal to uh, it will uh, complain uh, 2 will complain. And here uh, the reason is also if, uh, if it is not equal to uh, you can use in this fashion we have already seen here. And mind you you should not use the tilde uh, sign uh, like form uh, symbol you should not use that here in logical expression uh, only this exclamation mark is to be used. And uh, if both are um, uh, satisfied then what happens this uh, thing will return 1 and this will return 1 if uh, the conditions are satisfied. 1 and 1 will be 1 finally. So, the total um, uh, ending operation result only will be returned here uh, and uh, the, uh, it will be sensed accordingly. And if that happens uh, the condition is satisfied what we have to do is do the shifting actually and uh, while shifting we have to take care of uh, right shift and left shift. So, uh, we have already seen the MUX implementation as such with a question mark here earlier and that is precisely what we are using now. We had to take action if uh, the select pin is R L uh, underscore N, if it is high it means right shift. So, that is what we are doing here. So, remember that for MUX for 1 input is here and 0 input is here with a colon and of course, uh, termination of this uh, statement. And uh, this one if this is not satisfied that is if it is left shift uh, it has got to be uh, um, left shift by uh, 1 bit and that is the symbol here. And this is uh, either this uh, thing is assigned to SR or uh, this one is assigned to SR. Here is right shifted content, here it is left shifted content. So, that is what goes to uh, SR. SR once again is 16 bits therefore, this result is also 16 bits each of these results. Whereas, this is only 1 bit and uh, the comment says the appropriate thing here register the shifted contents. And uh, next what we had to do in the same block is uh, same else if block uh, data out we had to um, uh, take care. This is the data which is going out right now. So, what uh, once again you use the same RLN uh, symbol here and if it is right shift what we need to do is we had to take the uh, shift register LSB content which is SR0 and uh, output that just assign it to this transfer this contents into the data out as such. And uh, if it is um, uh, left shift naturally this will be uh, taking force and uh, here you assign the MSB here 15 is the MSB please note that and uh, SR within uh, brackets you just give spe uh, specify only that particular bit that means this is a single bit as such. So, uh, I think this is clear to you uh, that is what the comment says select either LSB that or MSB of course, depending upon whether this uh, RLN is uh, 1 or 0. And uh, having done this one we should not forget to decrement the counter because we started with 16 earlier uh, at the uh, reset time. Uh, now, uh, let us say that 16 when it has um, decremented it would be 15, but we are not going to check this status right now we will check only later on right we only take the action. Uh, suppose, uh, had the counter been um, 1 instead of 16, uh, 1 minus 1 is 0. So, uh, 1 bit it is already processed here and uh, it um, naturally exits the entire always block as such. In the case where um, counter uh, reg was uh, initial, initialized to 1 as such. And uh, so, this is to keep track of the bits to be sent. So, how many bits are remaining to be sent will be known if you just inspect the counter reg. And uh, one more thing we have to do is uh, this data we are going to send right here. That means, we should uh, also send a data valid signal here that is what is being sent here. And uh, since end of conversion is uh, I mean uh, it is not really over because uh, there may be more number of bits to be sent. So, uh, we still uh, uh, re I mean uh, de assert that. Uh, once again if uh, shift is um, uh, still present and the counter value has touched 0 which implies that all the uh, 16 bits have been already sent in the earlier uh, block that we have seen. So, this will uh, uh, take effect only at the next clock pulse 
So uh, uh, earlier uh, clock pulse all the 16 bits are already dispatched. What we had to do is please correct that. So end of conversion must be 1 here. So that is what implies here. And uh, in fact I have forgotten one more thing, one else statement also I have forgotten. So you just take it as after the end you have one more else statement and um, you do not have to uh, uh, take any action as such. So you just put a semicolon and wind it up. See we have uh, end of conversion, so it is written there 0, it must be corrected as this and then uh, what follows is one end, this is corresponding to the uh, end of the begin in the uh, right on the uh, second line as such and uh, then uh, you have one more end because we started with one more uh, begin right at the um, uh, top after always statement. So, uh, corresponding to this end. So, uh, we have also to add one uh, else because we have not accounted for that. So, that else is put here and uh, since we are not interested in uh, uh, outputting anything, you just put a semicolon implying it is a null statement as such. So, this we will have to incorporate. As so, next we will consider um, how to model a state machine as such. Now, let us say uh, we have um, four state state machine and uh, in each of the states you wish to um, uh, light up an LED or a, a lamp as such. So, Z, uh, Z stands for uh, uh, one lamp Z0 stands for the uh, S0 uh, um, condition uh, state indicator. If you are in S0 state then this lamp will glow as such and uh, likewise in all other uh, states. And uh, this um, S0 is the state and uh, um, in uh, binary notation we can say let us say it is 0, 0, then uh, 1, 0, after this it goes to second state and then after this depending upon the inputs it will go either to S1 state or S3 state as such. And uh, uh, coming back to the first state, if, uh, if uh, we have two inputs as such and based on these inputs all this uh, transition will take place. And uh, suppose if it is, uh, it is um, 0, input 1 is 0, so what you do is uh, you continue to remain in the same state and uh, of course this will be lit. And uh, when in 1 is 1, it will go to state S2 and uh, uh, thereafter uh, it will go to either um, S1 or S3 uh, depending upon uh, this in 2 input as such. If it is 0, it goes to S1, otherwise to S3 and once you land up in S1 uh, again it depends upon in 1 and in 2 if it is 0 1 note that this 0 1 is same as this state and uh, it remains in the same state as such and uh, if it is 1 1 this happens to be 1 1 so it, um, it takes you to this this state and uh, once again from here to and fro you can shuttle if you wish and uh, depending upon this control and this control 0 1 once again is same as this 0 1 condition and uh, in uh, either of these cases uh, you can return back to uh, the first uh, initialize uh, uh, initial condition state uh, by uh, depending upon into value right and let us see how to implement this. So, once again we use the always block and uh, positive edge of clock negative edge of reset and uh, as usual the reset. Here in this case there are uh, 4 lamps as such, so we will have to light them up and uh, all of them are uh, initialized to 0 and uh, this is uh, deliberately done for the time being because in S0 state uh, uh, this one will be uh, lit. So, we just uh, it does not really matter because uh, the moment you reset it will go to the S0 state in S0 state we have initialized I mean uh, appropriately done that. So, that will take care of uh, itself and uh, we have another variable called the state which is same as uh, S0 earlier mentioned earlier or 0, 0 that what we have already seen here. So, this is S0 or 0, 0 right. So, that is what we are initializing here. So, in this initialization uh, once again note that this is a non blocking statement uh, always within the um, always block you have to use this meaning it is equal to only in assigned statement you have to put uh, ordinary equal to. And uh, note this one, this is uh, reverse uh, apostrophe as such. 
used here to indicate that is a string you can consider this as a string variable as such S naught is the normal nomenclature in a valid name that you give. So, it need not be S naught it can be even state 0 or whatever you want to give you can give here and uh, every line is terminated by a semicolon. So, we initialize when the system is reset and uh, one begin was there correspond end. Now, uh, what we have seen is earlier in the earlier um, uh, applications. So, so many else if used here we have only one if and then else and uh, here starts a case statement it is similar to what we have already seen in the combination circuit and uh, we at, um, uh, that depends upon the actual state which is the variable here uh, indicating which state we are in. And if the state happens to be this S naught then only this uh, block is executed. Similarly, you have for uh, different blocks for different states as such. Once again a group of statements will have to have uh, begin and end and we um, set the outputs 0 through 0 3 depending upon uh, which state it is in. So, we are for S naught we want to uh, turn on uh, Z naught LED. And now, in this case suppose we say uh, in 1 is 0 that is what uh, the first condition is. Uh, if it is 0 we have to remain in the same state S naught that is what we have seen. And uh, if this is not satisfied that is in 1 is um, 1 then only you go to the uh, second state S 2 and uh, nowhere uh, in 2 is uh, brought here into picture. That means, uh, 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 it is a really do not care situation here it depends only upon the in 1 and not upon in 2 because we are not put that right. And uh, suppose we uh, after this let us say it goes to this condition is satisfied and if this condition is satisfied we continue to remain every time the clock strikes you come to the same route and, and are always revolving around the same state right. And uh, only if in 1 changes to 1 uh, this will not be a process and it will go to the next state which is S 2 here. And, uh, so, in S 2 state it is precisely same except that Z 2 is uh, lit here. And in this case uh, we need to inspect in 2 and um, based upon uh, whether it is uh, if it is 0 we uh, go to the next state uh, which is S 1 here uh, otherwise uh, we go to another state S 3. Uh, uh, in S 1 state it is once again similar to this and uh, 1 is set for Z 1 as such. And once again we inspect uh, in 2 and if it is 0 uh, we take back to uh, S naught condition and uh, if it is if in 1 is 1 then we go to S 3. Uh, please note that at this point when it uh, enters it implies that in 2 is 1. If in 2 is satisfied this will be satisfied and uh, it will exit this block it would not come to this. So, that is what I was saying if else if they um, have this uh, uh, vetoing power that is a priority can be assigned uh, in this way. So, if the top priority is met it uh, merely exit the always statement as such and uh, uh, that this implies that in 2 is 1 here in 2 is 1 and uh, in 1 is 1. If this condition is satisfied it will go to the uh, S 3 state. Uh, please note that it won't go to the uh, this state S3 state immediately. It will go only at the uh, next clock edge. It only prepares the ground to go for the next clock here, right here, right. This will become very clear to you if you see the timing diagram while we simulate the uh, whole thing. And uh, finally, we use one else, and because all the conditions that we want to meet have already been met here, and uh, so whatever uh, doesn't meet. I mean uh, is actually in 1 is 1 here, uh, in 2 remember is 1 here and in 1 is 0 here then only it will come to this state automatically because the other state is taken care here. So, what rem uh, only state that remains is uh, in 1 is 0 which will uh, naturally take it to S 1 and uh, suppose here from here we have landed up in uh, this state S 3 state. So, uh, similar thing follows here. So, we once again uh, turn on all LEDs off except for Z 3 here. In fact, you turn on here actually. And uh, if you forget to um, turn off the other things, it will um, be considered as a register and remains in the previous state. So, you should not forget to do that. And uh, if uh, in 2 is 0, 
uh, in this case, we are in S3 state. So, it will take it to S0, uh, other, uh, otherwise if uh, that is um, in 2 is 1, then uh, in 1 is 0, it will take you to S1. And uh, if this is also not satisfied, that is in 1 is 1, it will take you to S3. And uh, we have also put a default, although it is not really necessary here, because we have in 2 bits of state, we have only 4 possibilities, uh, 0 through 3 here. And uh, then why default? It is um, uh, uh, not just customary, uh, probably it may uh, so happen that um, um, tri state Z or uh, do not care situation arises. It may not arise in a sequential circuit, uh, but uh, it is always safer to put here. And another point uh, is uh, you may have uh, instead of 2 bits, you may have 3 bits, in which case you have used only S0 through S3. So, S4 through S7. Uh, or um, uh, not utilized. So, what will happen to such cases? So, uh, you should uh, um, uh, take uh, that into account as such. So, only then we can um, it will uh, it will be trouble free as such. And then we started with case. So, there must be an end case here and we also started uh, begin after always. So, this end accounts for that. For example, let us say in 2 is uh, 1 here and in 1 is also 1, both are 1. So, it should naturally take you to S3, uh, right. Say we are in S3 state and uh, in S3 state, let us say in 2 is 0 here, but uh, when you come here, it implies in 2 is 1, otherwise it cannot come enter this point. So, uh, then here also, if this is to be uh, processed, uh, this is the condition to be met. So, if, if you are to come here, you have to have in 1 equal to 1. That means to say when this is being executed, so it has to be in 2 as well as in 1, uh, 1. So, let us uh, verify that. So, we were in S3 state here, right. When in 2 is 0, it returns to, uh, do you remember this? Okay. Anyway, what we found is uh, in 2, 1 and in 1, 1 it should continue to remain in S3 state, right. If in 2 is 0, it returns to uh, S0 state. This you can verify once again, so you can see this, and, right. Have we account, ah, here, it is here. If in 2 is 0, that is the top priority we have given. So, it does not really care for in 1 thing, right. That is what we meant right in the beginning. So, if it is 0, straight away take to S0, right. I will work out another example uh, which you have already seen that is uh, pattern sequence detector as such. So, we have uh, the pattern sequence detector here, we wish to find the pattern 0110 and uh, this is exactly same what you have already seen and uh, I do not have to go into this I think as I uh, will start writing the program as such or uh, you want me to explain this, okay. So, uh, only difference is earlier you had used the notation S0, uh, S1 and um, being a binary bit here, 2 bits here, right. So, I am dispensing with binary and uh, even uh, uh, state as such, I mean uh, S0, S1 which we have seen in earlier example of um, a sequential mission. And uh, here uh, we straight away put a decimal number 0, 1, 2, 3 and uh, the arrows indicate and this is the input here, first one is the input and uh, output is this, uh, that is all you have to remember. And uh, another variable is the state. So, you have uh, as far as the output is concerned, you have just two, that is one is uh, out which is single bit and uh, state is actually two bits because it goes through 0 through th 3, 3 means in binary it is 1, 1. So, you need to um, keep track of that. While writing a full fledged uh, code as such, you have to have uh, remember all that and uh, re get it reflected on the code that you have. And uh, uh, let us start writing here. And before we uh, write, let us take the input pattern as uh, applied as this, say all 1 1 and uh, it may not be the very same example that uh, we had taken earlier. And any pattern is good enough because this is a machine which should cater for all sorts of uh, bit string, bit stream as such. So, now uh, if you inspect here and this is the output decide 
and what we want is all of them zeros so long as the decide pattern is not got. So the very first encounter with this 0, 1, 1, 0 pattern is here. It is all uh, underlined here, I mean uh, rather um, lined over the top and 0, 1, 1, 0 is encountered here. So the, uh, right at that point of time we want to put it 1 here and once again this 0, 1, 1, 0 will produce 1 here and uh, 0, 1, 1, 0 once again will produce 1 here. And uh, now let us uh, write the code for this. Say so once again we use always block. positive edge of clock or negative edge notice that there is no semicolon I should remember that. So once again we will have begin and finally end somewhere. So lest we forget I just put it here. And now what we have seen is we have to account for uh, 4 states 0 through 3. So uh, this is going to be first what we have to do is uh, there is no, I mean uh, reset signal is not shown there but uh, I have incorporated in the uh, program. So first of all thing we have to do is if reset is encounter what we have to do is there are two outputs mind you, uh, out as well as when you reset out must be 0 right that is what we have here, here in this state and the state itself must be uh, uh, 0 once again. So we will put this state here. right? So begin and one end here and uh, we have covered the reset portion. So if not that is else what we should uh, do is keep on accounting for each of the states there are uh, just 4 states. So we will use a case statement here. and the case depends upon the actual state here right. The state is only decimal number for ease of writing note that this is not a capital C but ordinary C because Verilog is case sensitive. So you have to take care of the case. So whereas VHDL is not case sensitive right that is the difference between VHDL and Verilog. And uh, if state is 0 let us say this case we are going to uh, put one after another if it is 0 it means state is 0 then we take this action. Now once again we say begin and uh, put what do you want here out must continue to be in uh, 0 only then uh, what should happen to the state ok we will put the state here. what should uh, happen to the state and now let us see uh, it all depends upon the input condition right. So uh, this is actually uh, when you enter this we are in state 0 but uh, what you are going to write here is the next state as such from this state where do you go to. So that state is what is implied here and uh, that will take effect only with the arrival of the next clock with the present uh, clock arrival we are here with the next arrival this will be uh, uh, taken into account as such. So state will have depend upon uh, in suppose in is 1 right we uh, need to stay right at uh, state 0 otherwise we need to go to state 1 that is what is implied here if it is 1 you remain here if it is 0 you go to state 1. So this is once again a case for uh, using a MUX as such. So what we do is what is the selector pin here that is nothing but in. So we will put in then question mark. So now it is a very simple thing you just see uh, 
uh, it has to go either to if it is 1 uh, it has to uh, remain in the same state. So, what we just put is 0 here then colon and then 1 it is quite simple like this are we clear. Now, let us uh, try in the same fashion here for uh, and uh, there must be one end. So, for uh, case 1 now let us see uh, once again begin and finally end and uh, here in this case out must be once again 0 right uh, that is this this one right and uh, if the input is 0 it continues to remain there and that. So, now what we do is state is you can write right here in then question mark then what we have is if it is 1 what should happen here if it is 0 it should remain there right if it is 1 it should go to 2. So, we start with 2 and then colon 1 right end is already there similarly for 2 once again begin end then out here also it is 0 then state here is we are in state 2. So, that is this state. So, input is 1 not this this is the output. So, uh, if it is 1 you go to state 3. So, it is 3 here and uh, otherwise it is no uh, here right. So, 2 to 1 you go if this is the input and uh, this corresponding output is same uh, linked to that state. So, we need to worry only about this input if input is 0 we go to state 1 right. So, the final thing we can write on similar fashion uh, now let us take care uh, out also will uh, change then now uh, we are in state 3. So, depending upon the input let us say input is 0 then it you have to go to state 1 as well as set the output 1. So, on the other hand if it is input is 1 uh, output is 0 and then it has to go back to uh, this let us take this condition first. So, uh, uh, we will take just the output if it is 1 once again here you had two conditions it is a conditional output as such. So, you had to once again use the mux and uh, again uh, select pin is in if in is uh, 1 that is this one right and uh, what you should uh, have is output as 0. So, uh, if it is first one is corresponding to 1. So, the output we are dealing with output. So, we are just assigning 0 here and uh, if it is 1 so, what is the output uh, for 1 it is 0 for 0 this is the condition right in 3 we have uh, in 1 um, 0 sorry that is this if it is 0 the output is 1. So, the, it has to be 1 here. So, what remains to be done is only the state. One second based on in you take action. Now, you see from 3 you can uh, if it is in is 1. So, you can go to 0 state right we are in 3 from 3 if it is uh, input is 1 you can go to 0 state if it input is 0 you go to 1 state here right. So, that is what we put here. So, finally, we say an end here and uh, this there was uh, a case here 
So what we had to do is write one end case also. Right, and uh, have we taken off um, all begins end? You can uh, each of these blocks there must be a begin and end, and uh, finally there must be a case. It's a counterpart end case, and then coming back here, um, uh, this begin end is already covered here, and there is one more begin here. We said we'll put one more end that is this here, or you can just say right here. Right. So, you can actually take this and uh, go through this, you can take an input pattern and go through this and uh, convince yourself whether the code really uh, does what is uh, intended to do and uh, this is clear I suppose. So, either 0 is assigned to output or 1 is assigned to output, so is the case for here, state is uh, assigned either 0 or 1. In case where it is 3, let us say, uh, you need naturally 2 bits here. So, state is 2 bits in width, whereas out is just single bit. So, uh, or we will see one of the patterns, uh, probably at least for uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, shall we consider uh, all of them were uh, ones, let us say. So, what is happening here? When you reset, it takes you to the state 0 and uh, if uh, let us say uh, because it was 0 in the first clock pulse arrival what happens it initiates this and uh, once it has done this role it has no more role to play here beyond that right because it is a priority encoder. So, it takes, takes you out straight away out of this always block right. Uh, so, next action will be taken only at the next positive edge of the clock right. So, uh, with the arrival of the second clock pulse, second instance relatively speaking. So, once again it will see. Now, let us say the reset has disappeared, right. Uh, what happens? This will not be satisfied. So, this this is not executed and uh, this was uh, this is therefore, executed only one time uh, at the power on uh, condition, right. When you switch on the system, so there will be a pulse created and that will uh, reset and uh, so long as it is asserted that long it will keep on rolling no matter how many pulses have lapsed it will keep on doing this and get back right. If there are 100 uh, clock pulses naturally 100 times it will revolve around do only this that uh, the role is only to uh, make out and uh, state 0 that is all it will do. And uh, beyond this um, after the reset is removed only then it can come to this uh, portion. So, having come here it was already uh, initialized to 0 the state. Therefore, naturally it will go to this block, execute this block and then again exit without uh, bothering about any other uh, uh, states there. That is what we said it is a priority, en uh, priority encoder as such. So, so, here in this state what it does? Uh, again it depends upon in there, right. So, if uh, in is 1, right, we said that uh, 0 will be assigned. So, the state is going to be 0, but we are already in 0 state. So, it continues to be in 0 state. So, first uh, let us say some nth clock it has entered this for the first time it uh, and it says uh, state will be uh, once again put to 0. So, with the arrival of the next clock pulse, so uh, it will again come to the same state and it continues to be in the same state so long as in is 0, uh, 1 right. Uh, suppose it uh, in is 0 then what happens state will get uh, updated to 1 now. So, that is what we have here see right from state uh, if the in is 0 it has gone to 1 and then the, uh, similar um, uh, explanation holds good for any other thing. So, let us say for uh, like that it has come from one state to another depending upon in and out and uh, thereby gradually takes right. So, but mind you everything hap happens at every clock pulse right and um, uh, you, uh, clock is too fast a thing to go uh, in a system. Suppose the um, uh, it uh, works in uh, 100 megahertz even in FPGA you can have 100 megahertz right depending upon the device and A6 you can even touch uh, 300 megahertz or even beyond depending upon the technology such as say Pi naught O9 technology right now. So, with that you can have uh, different speeds. 
So, but for this applications uh, that may not be a desirable thing right and this completes this uh, application as such and before we wind up we will um, see what assignment we can have on this. See we have, uh, we have seen this uh, input, uh, input in this fashion, but uh, at what time should the input be valid that is the question right. How are you to feed the inputs? You get my point. So, you had to feed well in advance before the clock strikes that is uh, before the uh, positive edge of the clock you should have uh, fed this and uh, mind you every clock you had to feed that uh, different inputs 1, 1, 1, 1 all should uh, keep track of the uh, clock speed at every clock you should uh, change this. So, it is a humanly impossible thing to do that. So, what we can do is you can mix we have already seen how to uh, use the shift register in the previous example parallel to serial conversion right. So, that is precisely uh, is a very handy thing application here is not it. So, you, you as a user can get uh, I mean uh, give let us say 16 bits and uh, put it in that uh, other um, module what we have already done and then uh, serialize and that serialize pattern is what is applied here right. So, is that clear? And uh, uh, when we uh, write the simulation, we will not go, uh, go to that depth, we will show you uh, that it can be done much more simple uh, in a simpler fashion, right? Uh, because of the tools, uh, I mean, the power of the tools, right? And uh, notice that this uh, whenever 0, you have one output here which you can easily trace and uh, convince yourself at that precisely at that point of time you have this. And this can be um, verified very easily once we take the simulator, simulation of this later on.